Happy Wednesday, second grade. I'm glad to be here with you again today talking about poetry. So just for a little review before we get started on our new lesson, I want you to think back to Monday's lesson. On Monday, we read two new poems by Alma Florada. One was called Lettuce and one was called Peaches. And we talked about how Alma used lots of descriptive words to describe how the peaches and the lettuce look, feel, and even how they taste. And then you brainstormed descriptive words and wrote your own poem about your favorite food. And your poems were awesome. So as the week continues, we're going to work on looking at other poems that use descriptive words and you're going to continue to write poetry using descriptive words. So today we're going to read a poem that has great descriptive language and it is called My Baby Brother by Mary Ann Hoberman. So let's get started. I'm going to read My Baby Brother by Mary Ann Hoberman. The first time I read it, I want you to close your eyes and see if you can create a mental picture of this baby brother in your mind. Here we go. My baby brother's beautiful, so perfect and so tiny. His skin is soft and velvet brown. His eyes are dark and shiny. His hair is black and curled up tight. His two new teeth are sharp and white. I like it when he chews his toes and when he laughs, his dimple shows. Now I'm going to read it one more time, and this time I want you to follow along with the words on the screen. My baby brother. My baby brother's beautiful, so perfect and so tiny. His skin is soft and velvet brown. His eyes are dark and shiny. His hair is black and curled up tight. His two new teeth are sharp and white. I like it when he chews his toes, and when he laughs, his dimple shows. Now I want you to follow along as we look for descriptive words together. So remember, we're looking for words that the poet uses to describe her baby brother. If you have an adult, you can turn and talk to the adult. You can always pause the video, or you may be doing this with your class. So remember, this poem is broken up into two stanzas. So here we have the first stanza. I'm going to highlight it for you. That's the first stanza, four lines. And then down here we have the second stanza, which is also four lines. So let's go back up to the first stanza. And we're going to take it line by line, and we're going to talk about which descriptive words the poet is using. So in the first line, my baby brother's beautiful. Now let's go to the second line. So perfect and so tiny. What word do you see in that line that describes how the baby looks in your mind? I think we can go ahead and underline the word tiny. That creates a picture, right? If the baby is small, we all know what a new baby looks like. They're pretty small. All right, let's move on to the next line. His skin is soft and velvet brown. Well, think about if you were to touch a baby's skin, it would feel soft. So let's include that one. And we can imagine if we are looking at a baby, the baby's skin may be velvet brown. So that's a really nice way of describing what the baby looks like. All right, the last line in that stanza, his eyes are dark and shiny. The word dark and the word shiny describe the baby's eyes. So those are, those are good descriptive words. So we're going to go ahead and underline those as well. So for the first stanza, we have tiny, soft, velvet brown, dark, and shiny. And those words really give us a good, clear picture in our mind. Even though we've never seen this baby, I can already imagine what he looks like. Now let's move on to the second stanza. Let's look at the first line of the second stanza. 
His hair is black and curled up tight. Well, if I know his hair is black, that gives me even more of a picture in my mind, so let's underline that one. And curled up tight must mean that he's got some really tight curls. So I bet he's super cute. Let's highlight that or underline that one. Okay, on the second line of the second stanza, his two new teeth are sharp and white. Well, I'm sure most of you know that babies can have some sharp teeth. So that would describe how his teeth feel. And white tells us what the teeth look like. So there we go. For that line, we've got sharp and white. I like it when he chews his toes. We can all imagine a baby chewing on their toes. Babies love to play with their toes. And then let's look at the last line and see if we can find any more descriptive words. And when he laughs, his dimple shows. Well, I think just the word dimple here gives us a, a good picture of what the baby looks like if he has a little dimple on his face. Okay. So there we go. We've gone through this poem and found some of the descriptive words the poet used to describe what her baby brother looked like. Before you start to write your own poem, I thought I could give you just a little example to get your brain thinking. So I thought we're all very familiar with the classroom clocks back at school. We all have pretty much the same clock in every room. So I thought maybe we could use that as an example. Now before I show you what I came up with, there are a couple of questions that I want you to be thinking about. First of all, what words could we use to describe the clock's shape? What words could we use to describe its size? What words could we use to describe its color? And any other descriptive words that you can think of. I'm going to show you what I came up with. Okay, so I came up with some words that describe the clock. And I thought about what the clock looks like. I thought about its shape, its size, and all of those, all of those things. So here we go. Round like a circle, black around the outside, white in the middle, black numbers in a circle, 1 to 12, hands point to the numbers, and then one short hand and one long hand. So I think that's probably enough to get me going on my poem. So here goes. So I just went over the list of descriptive words for the clock and I came up with this poem. So let's see what y'all think. Classroom clock. The classroom clock is beautiful. So round like a circle. It has a white face and a black rim all around. It's one short hand and one long hand point to crisp black numbers. From 1 to 12, they march around, tick, tick, tick. So you may have noticed that I used the same beginning, starting sentence that we heard in My Baby Brother. So you can see the classroom clock is beautiful. Sounds a lot like the first line from my baby brother, which was my baby brother's beautiful. So when you start your poem today, you can also use that line. Let's move on to brainstorming your poems. The next part of our lesson, you will need to take out the sheet titled Object Poem Brainstorming. It's really important that you narrow down which object you would like to write a poem on. Now, if you want to choose an object from your classroom that you can visualize in your mind and that you remember very clearly, then you can, or you can choose an object from somewhere around your house. This is what the brainstorming sheet looks like. So make sure you take this out and let's get started brainstorming. Now that you've finished brainstorming, you need to take out your object poem template, which is the paper that looks like this, and this is the paper that we're actually going to write our poems on. You'll notice that there's a line at the very top for the title, 
Underneath it, you're going to write your name. And then you can see that we already have that first line laid out for you. It says, my slash the blank is beautiful. So you can either use the word my or you can use the. Circle which one works best for your first sentence. Let's get started.